Gaming on Caffeine is proudly sponsored by Eclipse Server Hosting. Visit Eclipse.net and use offer code GOC50 for 50% off your first month. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac. We are back for episode 11 of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved. Last episode, we were working right at the very beginning on a little bit of AgriCraft crop breeding so that we could get ourselves all of the witchery seeds and hopefully progress on with the magical kind of quest line that we're doing right now. And what I've gone ahead and done since the end of last episode is exactly that. I waited until my artichoke seeds bred with my normal seeds, uh, which gave us some mandrake seeds, at which point I put them over here. Here, tried to breed these mandrake seeds with these water artichoke seeds which would give us a belladonna seed and then if I put the belladonna seed here and put some crops in like so so that they would breed we then got ourselves some snowbell seeds so we now finally have all of the seeds it takes to progress on with the magical side of things and get ourselves the blood altar from blood magic so that is hopefully exactly what we are going to do today uh, top tip if you are going to try and do this don't like you've got to keep an eye on these basically I was just sat here kind of watching Netflix and just what keeping an eye on these as, uh, as time went on because uh, we don't have a watering can right now so we can't speed up the process so all you got to do is just kind of put these down like so and then wait which is a bit of a pain but if you kind of go away and don't watch them, uh, occasionally weeds will appear within your crops. And then if weeds do appear, they will then spread to all of the nearby plants and basically kill them. So if you have like, if a weed appears here because you've just walked away and uh, left it, it will then take over your belladonna seeds and just destroy them. Uh, it'll take over these and just destroy them. You'll come back to just a big field of weeds. And it is not fun because then you've got to go ahead and breed all the belladonna and all the mandrakes again. And it takes forever. So uh, don't do that. Instead, uh, just keep an eye on them and destroy weeds anytime they pop up if you, if you break them quickly enough they will not destroy anything but without further ado we can now go ahead and make ourselves the anointing paste i think that's how it's pronounced uh, anointing paste this stuff over here now strangely the recipe seems to have changed since the episode before last which is weird because we haven't updated the pack the pack is exactly the same as it was two episodes ago so i'm not quite sure why this recipe has changed and the even weirder thing is that the recipe doesn't work if i put all of these in here uh, it is a shapeless recipe so it means you can put the items anywhere within the crafting table uh, it does come up but i can't take it out it doesn't work which is really weird so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and do it the other way on my uh, on my other screen here i've got up the recipe uh, how it used to be it's a bottle of water four cyan mana petals as well as of course all four seeds so what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to make myself some cyan petals we're going to go out to our mana pool i think we should have enough mana in our mana pool to get four of these hopefully these jokers don't try and kill me i know they will but one two three four i will take you thank you very much our jetpack allows us to just fly away from that sucker thank you very much we will close the door and let's have a look and see if this works so the old recipe requires some water so let me quickly fill this guy up with a little bit of water like so uh, we don't really need to fill up the rest of them and then in the crafting table it should be water in the middle cyan petals around the sides and then in the corners it should be mandrake seed water artichoke belladonna and Snowbell should be in this side here. And that doesn't work. That's really weird. So I'm going to go away, guys. I'm going to try and figure out what the heck's up with this. I might have to restart the server or something. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so about 10 seconds later, it turns out all you need to do is reload the Mind Tweaker scripts. For those who don't know, Mind Tweaker is the mod that lets you set up custom recipes. And if you use the command slash MT reload and then press enter and you spell reload correctly, it will go ahead and just reload those recipes, reload those scripts, and then it should work. So if you do have that issue, it's changed now. You can see the recipe looks how it's supposed to look. And we can go ahead and craft ourselves the anointing paste. Nice. Now... The next thing we need to do is, I believe, make ourselves a Witch's Cauldron. Because what we're after is, basically, we're after the Blood Altar. That's the end game. And to get this, we need the Attuned Stone, which is made using a Mana Diamond, which we can make. A Bucket of Lava, which is really easy. And then the Whiff of Magic, which is made in a Witch's Oven with the Rowan Sapling. Now, the Rowan Sapling is the hard bit. Because for the Rowan Sapling, we need some Mutandis in order to get the Rowan Sapling. Now, to get Mutandis, we need a Witch's Cauldron with an Egg. An Exhale of the Horn one and a mandrake root so we need to get this cauldron up and running and i believe if i'm not mistaken 
The way that we do that is by making a normal Minecraft cauldron and then right-clicking on it with the new anointed ink paste that we've got. So, let's give this a quick try here. Let's go ahead and make ourselves another cauldron. Let's put this down for now outside because we are going to have to use some fire with it later on. And I do not feel like putting fire down in my room with a completely wooden floor. So, instead... I will put it down just say over here for now. Right click with the anointing paste. Boom! And it becomes a witch's cauldron. Nice! So, let's go back over here. Let's quickly... Hold on, all of our stuff's broken. Let's quickly head on back inside and repair all of our tools. Because these things are absolutely flipping useless. Uh, I did do a little bit more mining between episodes. The Iron Hammer has done a pretty good job at repairing itself. And I do also want to work on this storage system a little bit more towards the end of this episode. You'll see there's a block missing here. And uh, some of you will probably already know why. Uh, but someone did tell me in the comment section a really cool thing that we could do with that system. So we'll work on that a little bit later on. For now, let me just kind of repair a few of these up so that we can go and kill this creeper. Also, let's get some bones as well, because you'll notice the recipe did require some mandrake root, which does require us to actually grow some mandrake. Now, we do have two eggs, which is nice. Hopefully, that will be enough. I have no idea if that actually is going to be enough. It's kind of just a game of chance, but... I'm kind of hoping it will be. Where is that creeper? You are there. Get the heck out of here. Mob goofing is off, so it doesn't destroy anything, thankfully. Now, the way the witch's oven works is you have to put a fire sauce underneath it. And uh, I did build grass over the water here uh, so that I could pull my stuff down. What the heck is this about? Get out of here. Okay, so now I've been killed by a creeper. Let's get back to what we were doing. So it needs to have a fire underneath it. And the best way to do that is, of course, using some netherrack as well as a flint and steel. Because then the fire will last forever. So uh, if I look at any eye, I'm pretty sure the recipe for the flint and steel requires steel. It does. So let's grab one of our flint, which we do have somewhere. But I'm not actually 100% sure where now. Because I thought it was there. But it's not. Is it in here? Did I move it? Oh, we got more eggs as well, which is good. Eggs are going to come in useful. Uh, let me have a quick look here for Flint. I did make some more steel between episodes. We do not have more of that as well, which is good. Uh, let's quickly search through all of these. Okay, so I couldn't find any Flint, but if you macerate some gravel, you do in fact get Flint. So we should be able to go ahead and do something like that. Get ourselves a Flint and Steel, and then if we head on back out here, uh, I think we should be good to go to make the first set of Mutandus. We are going to have to go and do a little bit in the Witch's Oven, and flipping heck, there are mobs everywhere, and it's always raining. It's so annoying. Uh, but let's see about getting some cobblestone, and it would be a lot easier if this wasn't just like complete. Get the heck out of here! Jeez! Jeez, this guy. I don't have a bow. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is bullying. Get it out. There we go. All right, let's, where, where are we going? We're going here. Let's put down some cobblestone, some cobblestone, then some of you. And then once we've done that, we can actually go ahead and light this with our flint and steel. Boom. And we can put down some grass and we should be good to go. Nice. All right. So once we've got that down, the next thing we are going to need to do is actually fill it with water. It does require three buckets of water in order to actually work. So we'll go one, two, three, craft that up. Then what? Oh, the recipe for a bucket changed, didn't it? That's not how you make a bucket. Oh, okay. Instead, we're going to head on back inside. We're going to get ourselves a normal bucket. And we're going to do a little bit of work in the witch's oven. Because we actually need that that essence of the horned one, I think it was. Or something like that. Uh, in order to proceed. And also, let me quickly do a bit of a dump here. So I don't have to carry all of this stuff around. And also, I kind of don't want to have to carry around all of this creosote oil. But I don't think you can put it back into the coke oven. No, you can't. Can I just put this down somewhere? No, I can't. Oh, I'm going to have to use it. That's fine. We can actually just go ahead and make some more of the treated wood uh, that we can then use to make another water wheel later on down the line. So I'll take you. Uh, I think you can make treated wood with any kind of wood. I don't think it has to be oak. Uh, so let's put four in there. Let's take all of you. And if we do something like this, that should get us our bucket back, which is nice. So now we can go and fill that up. Before we do that, let's have another look at the recipe for Mutandis, because if we look over here, it does require this exhale of the horned one, which is an oak sapling in the witch's oven. Uh, I believe you can use anything to burn it. I don't think that really matters, but you do have to have a clay jar in there. Now, to make a clay jar, we, of course, initially need some clay. We can take three of those, and I think all we have to do is simply craft those up and smelt them, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll take these over here. One, two, three. That is not at all apparently how that works. Clear jars are made. Oh, they need one more. 
And once we've got four of those, we're going to smelt those up in the furnace. And I think that should actually go ahead and get us these guys. Oh, what is it with the Enderman as well? All the mobs today. That one is going to die and get us an Enderman head, which might actually come in useful later on down the line for some of the Ender IO stuff, which is actually kind of cool. And what else do I need? I need a sapling. Let's take ourselves an oak sapling. Thank you very much. And this should be enough for us to make one of those uh, exhales of the horned one. So... Over here, we're going to put in the normal sapling, like so. We're going to put in the clay jars, like that. We're going to put in some wood down there. I probably should have made it into planks because it'll last a little bit longer, but I'm not going to sweat it too much. It should be fine. And we got wood ash. What? <laughs> what? What? Oh, is it like a... Is it like a... Is it like a random chance kind of thing? Do I have to keep burning these and just hope that I get one? Oh, I hope that's not the case. But what is with the Enderman? I hope that's not the case, but it might be. So let's grab, thankfully we have 53 of these saplings. So hopefully it won't take too long. That Enderman is, is looking for trouble. Let me go ahead and make a bunch of planks. Let me go ahead and put those in there. I'm going to wait around a little while, guys, and see if we get an XL of the horned one. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, we actually got ourselves on the sixth try, on the fifth try, uh, we got ourselves an XL of the horned one. I'm going to leave this running for a little while because we, oh, we got two, nice, okay. Uh, I'm not going to leave that running for a little while because it no longer has any clay jars in it. Uh, I was going to run it because I thought we might need two of these in the long run, but all we need now is to actually go ahead and make the mutandus, which we need an egg, the XL of the horned one, and the mandrake root, and the way that we get the mandrake root is by bomb milling up the mandrake seeds and then breaking them once they are fully grown, at which point we should be pretty much good to go. So let's take those bones. Let's make some bone meal. Uh, I think there was some more bone meal in there somewhere. I'm pretty sure we had some. There it is. And once we've got that, all we've got to do is throw all three of the ingredients into the cauldron along with some water, and it should be good to go. So this thing does require three buckets worth of water to fill it up. So one and two and three and then what it should start to do if you've got the fire sauce underneath it it will start to bubble like so then all we need is some of these mandrake seeds so i will take the mandrake root sorry i will take that i will plant that back down uh do 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 we've got quite a lot of these seeds now which is nice i will take you and we'll do the same thing again uh, two horns should be enough for now because we can only well we've only got two of the uh exhale of the horned one so we do need our eggs and once you've got everything that you need, all we need to do is actually throw them all in one at a time. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you have to do it in the order it shows here. So, mandrake root, uh, exhale of the horned one, and then egg. If you like throwing the egg first, I don't think it works. Yeah, it doesn't work. So, you have to throw them in in the right order. In this case, it is the mandrake root. Exhale of the horned one. Egg. At which point, you should start to see some cool particle effects kind of spinning around just above the cauldron. And any second now. Any second now. Any second now, but uh, we got ourselves some mutandas. Nice. Now, what mutandas does is it will go ahead and if you plant down something living like an oak sapling and right click it with the mutandas, it will turn it into something else. You can see it there, turn it into a dark oak sapling. And this is where the element of randomness kind of comes in because uh, if we go back to the blood altar, and the attuned stone that we need to make it and the whiff of magic, we need to smell up a rowan sapling. And as we just saw, it's not necessarily guaranteed that we're going to get a whiff of magic for every rowan sapling. So we're going to need multiple rowan saplings in order to make this work. Uh, and basically, all we have to do at this point is do this over and over and over again until we get lucky and get ourselves a rowan sapling, which could happen anytime soon. It could take absolutely forever to get. So we are going to have to make quite a lot of this mutandis. Uh, when I did it in a single player world, I did get it fairly quickly. So I'm hoping to have similar luck again. Let's throw in you and you and you. If this fails, the mandrakes are not too hard to get. Uh, mostly it's just waiting for the um, exhale of the horned one. But really it's not too bad once you've got the system in place. I'm hoping we can get it on the second round here. So I'll do it again. Boom. 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 No. <laughs> okay. Well, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to make myself some more mutandus. I'm going to do this over and over and over again until I get a Rowan sapling. I'll be back in a second. And there we go. It took one more, one more round. The first one actually got us a Rowan sapling. So all I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take this Rowan sapling. And I think it would be a wise idea 
Instead of just throwing it directly into the witch's oven and hoping that we get ourselves the first, the whiff of magic. Instead, I'm going to try and get a Rowan tree. And then once that's up, we should be able to get actually a few more saplings from this thing uh, just by breaking it. And it looks like it might actually give a pretty cool... Oh, there we go. Look at all this. Look at all these guys. Uh, and I think we should probably do this a few more times. Uh, I think they can actually get pretty tall, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen some really tall Rowan trees uh, in the past. That one's a little bit taller. Uh, I'm wondering if this gives like a nice, cool green plank. Uh, I'll take a look in a second. That gives us actually gives a lot of saplings out, which is really nice. We now have uh, 12 of them. I think there's uh, one more over there. We've got 14 of these saplings, which is really nice. Do these give, like, green planks? Oh, you can't turn them into planks? What? Do I have to, like, sawmill them or something? Nope, we just can't turn into planks. Okay, in that case then, let's take our Rowan sapling. Let's put it into the witch's oven with some more clay jars. And let's see if we can get ourselves our first whiff of magic. And there we go. After all of that work, we finally got ourselves a whiff of magic. Two whiffs of magic, believe it or not. And so, what we should be able to do now is make ourselves this attuned stone and then make ourselves the blood altar. So, to make this, we're going to first of all need a mana diamond. I'm really hoping that we have enough mana in the mana pool to actually go ahead and make this into a mana diamond. I also think we might need an ender, a mana pearl, uh, later on in today's episode as well. But that might... I might be wrong on that. I'm not too sure. Don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, let's Let's throw the mana pool, the mana diamond into here. We do good stuff. We'll throw that in there. Let me quickly go and grab some lava from our trusty nearby lava lake. And if we go boom, boom, and boom, we get ourselves the attuned stone, which I think means that we should finally have everything we need to go ahead and make ourselves the blood altar. So, let me get rid of some stuff. I should probably keep a hold of my hammer. We should have an absolute ton of cobblestone at this point, so let's go ahead and grab just as much of that as we can carry. Let's make a bunch of double compressed cobblestone. And once we got four of those, I'm pretty sure that we are good to go. So I picked up some uh, living rock on the way back in. Let's make some living, wood, uh, living rock slabs. And then, boom, we got ourselves the blood altar finally. Jeez, that took a long time. But we now actually have the thing, which is kind of fantastic. And in a future episode, we will actually start to use that uh, to our advantage. And we maybe mix it a little bit with Thorncraft to get some really cool stuff. But... What I want to do for the remainder of today's episode is something I teased a little bit earlier on, and that is the block that is going to go here. So first of all, let's put all of this cobblestone back because it is just not good lying on the floor. But what I'm going to put here is a controller. Now, uh, like I said, somebody in the comment section actually pointed this out to me, but you can make a draw controller, which is made using a normal draw, some cobblestone, two redstone comparators, and it does require a diamond chipset, which is a little bit expensive, but... This thing is really cool because basically what it allows you to do, let's put you and you in there and make not that, I want to make that. Uh, how much redstone flux is that going to take? Probably an absolute ton. Uh, 800,000. That could take a little while, but hopefully it should be fine. Uh, but basically what it does is once you put the draw controller in the middle here, it will like detect all of the connected draws. So basically all of the draws we have here. And all you've got to do is right click your items onto the controller and it will put them into the draw where they belong. So if I have like some redstone in my inventory and I right click it there, it will just put it where it belongs. So I don't have to figure out where everything is and like remember all the locations and go around putting stuff back in all the different spots. It's really cool. Uh, let's see if we have what it takes to make the comparators. Uh, three of these redstone torches, some more stone and then some nether quartz. I did get some nether quartz between episodes. I did a bit of a trip to the nether. Uh, we do have some normal stone. I will take that. And then as for redstone and sticks, they are also fairly easy to come by. Let's go and craft all that up in here. By the way, the blood altar is, of course, not going to stay there because it does need quite a bit of space to actually get to its max size. I will take one, two, three, four, five, six of those. That should be enough for us to make two of these comparators like that. Then all we need is cobblestone uh, and also some more drawers. So that requires an actual whack ton of wood. Uh, let me get a little bit more of that. How are we doing over here? Mostly in the oak wood plank section. So... Let's, I don't think it matters what color it is, because it's like it always looks the same color. Uh, let's take one, two, three, four of those. And again, we'll do something like this. One, two, three, four. And you in the middle. One, thank you. Like I said, I don't think it really matters. We probably should have made it out of dark oak just so we could put some more over there, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to wait until this is done. And I'll be back in a second. And once that's done, we can take ourselves the diamond chipset. And we should now be able to make the draw controller. Like so, boom, 
Mm, boom. There we go. And then if we put this in the middle, this thing is really cool. We put it there. Boom. And now it will detect all of the drawers that are connected to it. And for example, if I just right click with my redstone, if we look over here, we have, uh, let me fill up that top slot real quick. There we go. We've got 512 in the top one, 115 in the bottom. I don't know if you can see one or two in a whaler there. If I just right click, boom. And you can see it put it in there. It put it in the second drawer. It put it in the free available drawer. So now all I have to do, if I have stuff in here already, so for example, iron, I can just right click and it will put the iron away. This is going to be really cool for putting away just a ton of stuff that I don't want to have to go through and do it manually. Like all of this, I can just put away, put away. I can put, I don't have nether quartz anyway, so I can't put that away. But basically, it's really, really cool. I can put all the stuff away uh, without having to go through and individually remember where everything is. And it's going to make our lives a little bit easier. Of course, we do need to upgrade this a little bit so that we have even more stuff integrated like sticks like rowan saplings bone meal mutandas all that kind of stuff i uh, kind of need their own draws but that is something that we will work on in the future for now guys thanks for watching if you did enjoy the video be sure to hit that like button it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below and i will see you guys next time